Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So this is the i5-4590S workstation PC that I turned into a gaming PC for under £84 in 2022. So after the first video I made on this thing, I really wanted it to make a return as it was just so much fun. £84 was a bargain. Today I just really want to upgrade this thing. On the cheap of course. And when I say cheap, I mean very cheap. In fact, it works out even better than what I paid originally for this system. You won't be disappointed with a price to performance, so stick around to see how I managed to add a GTX 1050 Ti and 16GB of RAM for next to nothing. But before we go any further, if you haven't seen the first part of the series, then I suggest you do so. Just to catch up, there'll be a link in the description below. But if you don't want to go and watch that video, which is fair enough, I don't blame you, in short, the first form of this PC included an i5-4590S, as mentioned, 8GB of RAM in dual channel, 120GB SSD, and we've got a secondary mechanical hard drive, which is 500 gigs, and it came with Windows 10 Pro for under £42. Absolute steal. That's all we do around here, is get the bargains. And then, of course, I, I added an R9 360 OEM version purchased from CEX, in person, bear in mind, which was very lucky, and I paid £42, and I turned this PC into something more capable than a potato. So anyway, now that you've kind of got an idea of what's going on, let's get to upgrading this thing. So as mentioned in the first video, I purchased a kit of 16 gigabytes Vengeance RAM for £24.99. Admittedly, this is an excellent deal. I got really lucky, to be honest, but I'm not complaining. So to my surprise, the PC originally came with 8 gigabytes memory in dual channel. I didn't expect it to be in dual channel, so that's why I bought the 16 gigabyte Vengeance RAM just because I'm not into that single sticker memory stuff. However, like I said, I was surprised and it did come in dual channel. For the first video, I decided just to keep the 8GB just to keep the cost down. After recently stumbling upon a great deal for a GTX 1050 Ti 4GB model, I decided to upgrade this little beast and that's what we are doing today, just to see if it's capable. I mean, even the first iteration of this build was capable, so it's only going up from here, boys. And girls, of course. So all I'm going to be upgrading today is the RAM and the GPU. Everything else is fine for now. The power supply, 200 watts. Yeah, it is going to be pushed to its knees, but that's what we like to see. I mean, that's why we have 200 watts of power. It's for them to be used. So I'm not going to be upgrading anything else but the RAM and the GPU. So let's break down the cost just so we can see where we are at with this build because it's probably going to get a little bit confusing with all the prices, costs and how I'm actually upgrading this PC for technically cheaper than what I paid for it. As I mentioned, I bought 16 gigabytes of RAM for £24.99. I then managed to sell the 8 gigabyte kit that the PC came with for £22.99. So on paper, I technically upgraded from eight gigabytes to 16 gigabytes for two pounds. Obviously there's a couple of pound differences with eBay fees and stuff, but let's just say for a matter of a few pounds, I upgraded from eight to 16 gigabytes. What a deal. Now, admittedly, I did get lucky on the 16 gigabyte kit, but that's what it's about. It's about sniping them deals. So it is what it is. I then bought the before mentioned GTX 1050 from eBay. So as I was scouring eBay for the bargains, you know, I do also buy locally, even CEX. I just, I pretty much shop everywhere. I noticed this GTX 1050 Ti listing on eBay and it was listed as spares or repairs, so faulty. But in the description, I noticed the seller had mentioned it's just crashing in games. So, you know, it's not artifacting, it's booting up into Windows. So I decided this is probably just gonna be a faulty or outdated driver, which I've seen many of times. I bought many of graphics cards, which have just been sold as faulty. So I took my chances, paid the 52 pounds. It arrived three days later. I put it into my system and lo and behold, with the newest driver installed and a nice clean, it worked without any issues whatsoever. There you go, I managed to get a GTX 1050 Ti for £52. Now, of course, I don't advise doing this as it is a gamble. I always take my chances with, with things like this because how I see it is because I'm quite used to selling on eBay and stuff. Realistically, I know I could have just relisted this 1050 Ti as spares and repairs and got my money back. Yes, I'm sitting on £52 pounds at that point. Like I said, it's a risk I was willing to make and I'm glad I did because it paid off. And this managed to save me roughly £100 as GTX 1050 Ti's easily sell on eBay for over £150. So great steal there. So I then sold the R9 360, which I really didn't want to part ways with this guy because to be honest, he was great. I did like the idea of a single slot OEM card, which performed very well on the budget 
budget side, I managed to sell this baby for £93.49. And this thing flew off the shelf. It sold within hours. Definitely think I could have made more, but I'm not about that. You know, I, I literally paid £42 for this thing. So at this point, things are going very, very, very well. So I'll put all the numbers on the screen just so you can get a better understanding because obviously it's a bit difficult to figure out what was going on. I mean, trying to figure how much I've put into it, how much, you know, I've got back from selling parts was quite difficult for me to figure out and it was me doing it so obviously you're probably like whoa he's done this he's done that he's done that he's probably spent 10 grand but no so as you can see on the screen originally the workstation pc cost me 42 pounds i then bought the r9 360 for 42 pounds in total 84 pounds to build well not even to build to put together a gaming pc i then bought a 16 gigabyte kit for 24.99 so this brings the total cost up to 109 pounds i then sold the 8 gigabyte kit for 22.99 but all you find on ebay is server memory and it's you know a lot of motherboards don't support it so actual DDR3 is almost becoming a bit of a gem at the moment. We've got the £109 minus the £22.99, which leaves me of a total of around £86 into the build so far. I then bought the GTX 1050 Ti for £52, so I've now got £138 into the build, which is still great, but then I've got an R9 360 still laying around. Like I said, I sold that thing for £93.50, which then leaves me of a total of £44.50, roughly give or take some eBay fees, into this build. So I've managed to get a PC with an i5, you know, an SSD, Windows 10 Pro. I've upgraded it to 16 gigabytes of RAM, a GTX 1050 Ti, and all I have put into this technically now, after the sales, is £44.50, like I said, give or take some eBay fees. And I've managed to get an absolutely great PC build. So in all of its glory, it's safe to say that this is a nice upgrade from eight gigabytes of RAM to 16 gigabytes. And I'm looking forward to see how the 1050 Ti performs compared to the R9 360. I've been rambling, so without beating around the bush, let's get into some benchmarking. So moving on to the benchmarks, we're starting off with CSGO and look at them numbers. So for reference, the orange graph is the PC benchmarks before the upgrade. So just the eight gigabytes of RAM and the R9 360, which I thought at the time was impressive. But Jesus, after benchmarking these games again with the GTX 1050 and the 16 gigabytes of RAM, wow. Before the upgrade, we've got an average FPS of 153, a 1% low of 101, and a 0.1% low of 74. I stated that was more than enough. The experience from the GTX 1050 and the 16 gigabytes of RAM was so noticeable. I think because the 1050 Ti still gets driver updates, it just felt more dialed in. So let's move forward. Let's see how this machine now handles the rest of the games. Okay, so moving on to Valorant, as you can see by them numbers, absolutely impressive. So we're just playing at the 1080p on the lowest settings and the R9 360 build in the beginning got an average FPS of 157, a 1% low of 111 and a 0.1% low of 78. So yeah, the 1050 has absolutely blown it out of a window, literally doubled the performance with an average FPS of 324 a 1% low of 279, and a 0.1% low of 212. So yeah, very, very playable. Like I said in the last video, the R9 360 ran this game without any issues whatsoever anyway, but now them 0.1% lows are just through the roof. Like I said in CSGO, I think with the driver stability, it just fills and runs a lot better on the GTX 1050. So absolutely perfect experience on Valorant, and there was no issues whatsoever. Okay, so moving on to a fan favourite, Fortnite. And wow, once again, like I was saying in the first video, 124 FPS was great. The 1% low of 89 and the 0.1% low of 64 felt absolutely great. But this was a similar experience to CSGO. Even though before the upgrades, the game fell and ran smoothly. After playing on this new machine now, absolutely incredible. So an average FPS of 245, a 1% low of 197 and a 0.1% low of 146. Wow. So I wanted to keep the settings the same just so we can have a, an apples to apples test so to speak. You could easily play on higher settings with a 1050 and the 16 gigabytes of RAM and it'll be an absolutely incredible experience. Personally the FPS is nice to me and I think Fortnite looks fine at these settings as well. So very very pleased with these results. Okay let's go. <clears throat> okay so maybe Moving on to GTA 5, one of my favourite games, 
one of my all-time favourite games in fact. At high settings with FXAA enabled, the original PC handled this game fine. There was actually no issues whatsoever. No lag, no noticeable frame time issues, it just ran perfectly. You'll be happy to see that at the same settings with the new upgraded system, we got an average FPS of 94, a 1% low of 84 and a 0.1% low of 68. So yeah, the 62 FPS inverse stock machine was absolutely perfect but obviously the more frames the better. And GTA 5 was a pleasure to play with this new system. I mean, 94 FPS is, wow. You could definitely crank these settings up to very high and have a lovely experience, even with two times MSAA and you'll still be above 60 FPS. So yeah, big thumbs up for this new machine on GTA 5. So I'm sure at this point you are noticing the trend of this machine just being absolutely impeccable compared to the stock version. So we're moving on to Fallout 4 playing with the medium high mix with the anti-aliasing option set to the highest which I think is TAA and as you can see on the stock machine we've got an average FPS of 56, 1% lower 49 and a 0.1% lower 41. With the 1050 and the 16 gigs upgrade we got an average FPS of 89, a 1% low of 81 and a 0.1% low of 64. So this game is usually capped, I uncap it because I like the higher FPS and I don't see any graphical glitches or no glitches whatsoever, no bugs. So I would recommend just playing at higher settings and just hitting a 60 FPS because it is fine. But like I said, just for the sake of the benchmarking purposes, I like to keep it uncapped and I'm keeping the settings the same as the first test. So overall, obviously it plays for like four. The 1050 Ti is a little beast of a card and it still is. Okay, so moving on to the latest and greatest title in this list of benchmarks and the final benchmark of the video. We've got Forza Horizon 5. We're playing at 1080p medium preset with two times MSAA. So admittedly, it's only about a 25% increase, but a 25% increase nonetheless. And we managed to hit over the 60 FPS mark. On the stock version, we've got an average FPS of 43, a 1% lower 37, and a 0.1% lower 32. The upgraded system got an average FPS of 64, a 1% low of 58 and a 0.1% of 52. So much better performance. I did test the high preset and it did run around the 40 and just over the 40 FPS and that was more than playable. So I will be sticking to playing on the high settings whenever I play this game. And overall, it was just an absolutely great experience in all of the games I tested today. I'm very, very happy with the way this PC has performed, especially on that 180 watt power supply. In fact, it's very impressive. I definitely won't be able to squeeze too much more out of it. So if I am looking to upgrade, let's just say the CPU next, mm, you never know. Maybe another graphics card upgrade. I will have to install a better power supply, but in the meantime, an absolutely brilliant machine. Like I said, I'm just gonna wrap this up with a very quick conclusion. There's not much to be said, like I said. The stock PC was flawless to me at the time. Obviously, when you upgrade, you, you then look back and go, wow, it just, it wasn't great, but it was at the time. But this new PC is absolutely flawless. This wouldn't need to be upgraded for a while now. I will be happy to test some more AAA games and now put this PC through its paces because it definitely will hold up in a lot more games. I just tested these games originally on the stock PC because it was just an £84 PC and I just want, wanted to show realistically what the PC could handle. But now this PC probably will play most games thrown at it. Not at the highest settings on some games, but it definitely will play and run the games. So yeah, once again, very pleased with how today has turned out. I hope you did enjoy. So if you do have any questions regarding this PC or anything regarding this video or any question regarding hardware at all, please put in the comment section below. I hope you did enjoy. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye and take care.